All right, folks, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. We've had some really nice weather lately here on the East Coast. It's been warm, and I've been going fishing here in Rhode Island. But it hasn't been that great, you know? It's basically just a glorified version of itself from January and February. Like, not much new is happening. There's no, like, new fish showing up with the warm weather, which is something that I really took for granted when I lived in Philadelphia. All right, there's a lot of diversity down there. Freshwater, especially. Flatheads, snakeheads, musky, for example, amongst other things. Big migratory striped bass, pre-spawn bass. There's a lot going on in the early spring down there. And for that, I have decided that it's time to take a trip to the south. So we're gonna be going down there to my old stomping grounds, Philly, Jersey, Delmarva. You know, I'm not really sure exactly where. We're just gonna kinda do a tour, watch the weather, watch the conditions and just try to catch what, what, what whatever we can. I've done trips like this plenty of times in the past and one of the biggest issues I've had is keeping up with charging all my devices. All right, camera, phone. I got batteries that charge other batteries, you know, fish finder batteries. And it's a constant struggle trying to stay fully charged. But from here on out, I think we're gonna have a lot easier time with that because now, that leads us to today's sponsor. All right, so we've come to the edge of the woods here. There's a lot of construction going on in my backyard. It's very loud. Uh, but yeah, we're taking a look at the Anchor Solix C1000. Here it is in all its glory. All right, you can see its size relative to my hand. I mean, it's bigger than any other portable charger I've ever used, for sure. But uh, it's got a lot more power. Power output is substantial. Okay, 1800 watts of energy output and 1056 watt hours. So if you take those numbers and compare it to the industry average, this thing's actually about 15% smaller than uh, other things in its class. This has the capability of being charged with solar panels. So if you're really roughing it or if you really just hate the system and you wanna get off the grid for a while, you could get solar panels for this thing and plug it in and this thing will recharge from the solar panels in less than two hours, all right? It's pretty good. If you're like me and you don't have the solar panels and you're just gonna plug it into the wall, you got this little port right here. And uh, you know, you plug that into the wall and it's gonna charge fully in about an hour and 20 minutes on standard setting. And there's even a faster option. You, you use the extra fast charging setting and it will charge fully in about 58 minutes. Hour and 20 minutes is fine with me. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing any like super fast charging here. But let's take a look at the the ports on this thing. And it's got six like standard wall chargers here. It's got two micro USB, two USB, and it's even got a little car charger here, like your cigarette lighter outlet thing. If cars still have that, I don't know. There's still chargers out there that run off those things, so it's good to have a diversified portfolio here. You wanna have like all the options especially when you're out on the road, no service. You gotta be prepared for anything. Your headlamp might die. Your lantern might run out of gas, all right? This thing's got you covered. Look at that light, three settings. That light's pretty good, all right? This is full sunshine, and we can see that light. But, uh, you know, this thing weighs 28 pounds. It's not heavy to lift, I mean, it's not big. It's not like a, you know, deep cell marine battery or something that weighs like 60 pounds. No, this thing's, this thing's manageable. It's got long lasting battery technology. It's got a 10 year lifespan or 3000 charges. All right, so 3000 charges. If I recharge this thing once a week and there's 52 weeks in a year, that's 57 years of power that this thing is gonna bring for me. All right, so that is pretty much gonna last the rest of my life. All right, if you're so inclined to get a second anchor box, all right, you can actually connect the two right here, and then you have double your power, and they will interlock with each other. Yeah, you can turn it on and off, this button right here. All right, it has like Wi-Fi capability, so you can connect to your phone and control it from your phone. All right, this thing's legit. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna take this thing, and we're gonna hit the road. Like, it's raining sideways again, yeah, just misty. All right, so we're on the road now. We're leaving Rhode Island, we're heading to the south. I have like a starting point in mind and then depending on how that goes, we're just gonna go with the flow. 
We're gonna fish for this, that, the other thing, all the fish, right? We're trying to catch all the fish. Fresh water, salt water, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delmarva, Chesapeake, you know, lots of different things. All right, we're arriving at our destination here. Been here for 10 minutes. This is looking pretty good, other than the wind. Here's what we're looking at. It's not like it's gonna get rough. It's All right, well, I decided that this kayaking wasn't gonna be a good idea. I didn't know where the spots on this river were. I was planning on going miles in either direction, but throw a 30 mile an hour wind into the equation, you're looking at a bad time. So I opted to do some shore fishing. This looks way better than kayaking. I got Kai Tech rigged up from the last time I was fishing. The freshwater stuff. Really just fishing for shad and smallies now. That might have been a bite. I think maybe I should throw the ultralight. So if I do hook a shad. There's a fish. Oh, see that thing jump? It's off. I think the hickory shad fight better in the fresh water, so let's put the ultralight on. We got an even smaller cast master on the ultralight. Let's try it. And while shad are not really a favorite species, it's just nice to see that there's life in the waters. All right, so this is a... Uh, I don't know what size, 12 ounce Castmaster. It's quite a bit smaller. It's gonna be quite a bit harder to fish in the wind, but should be getting bites from these shad. This is the way I used to shad fish, the Schuylkill River. Four pound test trout rod. Dang, first cast. Oh, he's gone again. Come on, Chaz. You're a little tricky. Got one. Nice small river. It's like a trout river. We're basically trout fishing. The question is, do we keep this hickory or do we release this hickory? I'd like to keep him. There's a small hickory too. Oh, well, it's our first fish. One of the easiest to catch in like the spring rivers is the hickory shed. We're really starting at the bottom here. We'll work our way up. Hey, a little nicer. It's a hickory. There's your hickory shad. Fresh water. Usually catching them in the salt water, but. They're up here spawning. Had a few other bites. You know, I don't really know what we're gonna do. I have no idea, but I'm quite content sitting here. On a windy day. Nice little river action. I'm starting to think. Maybe we should go somewhere with, with American Shad. I'm pretty sure like we're, there's no Americans here. There he is. There he is. We're having quite a few bites that just don't stick. Four pound test. And a big bow in your line from the wind isn't good for getting the hook sets. This is one we got pretty good. Unless he came off? God damn. Just losing all of them. Losing all the shad. <laughs> There's another. Just casting it down river and letting it dangle. I saw him jump. Another shad. 
hickory. Oh. Greyhounding. It's not a bad fish. Is that American? Is that an American shad? I think that's an American shad. I don't really know. That mouth looks like an American, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Could be wrong, but looks like it. A little buck. That's cool. Different kind of shad. I don't know, it might be a hickory. So this one might be an American. It might be a hickory. I'm not really sure. Let me know. I think it's an, an American. Just dangling down river here. Right, we're going back to the car. We're going to see if we can't find some real shad stuff and not just glorified trout lures. All right, the wind is really working against us here. I was planning to kayak. I'm not kayaking in this wind. You know, we're still kind of just snooping around. We're gonna try somewhere else. Maybe somewhere we have a better chance of catching an American shad or smallmouth. I don't really know, but we are going to be using the Anchor Solix C1000 exclusively to charge everything on this trip. All right, and I started this trip with an 87% charge. That's what it had right out of the box. I didn't even charge it to 100. We're just gonna go with 87% and we're gonna see after how many days charging all my stuff, see what our battery percentage is, all right? But let's try to find some fish. All right, so from there, I kind of decided that it's probably best to just get some rest. So I drove to my parents' house who live in Delaware and I decided to fish this little lake near their house where I knew the crappy fishing was pretty good and uh, figured, you know, let's just have some nice relaxing crappy fishing. All right, we're taking what the fish gods are giving us here. They're hitting the three inch Kai Tech pretty good, so. All right. The screen, it looks like we might be marking some fish. I don't know if you see that. There's a fish. Yappy. There's some yappies in here. Spring yappies. Damn, the bait is out there. You see it out there? I'm guessing it's shiners. It's holding the crappies. My only two bites in this cove are both under the bait. Let's go again out there under the bait. It's pretty like pretty nice school of bait, honestly. Look at that fish just busted on the bait. That was a, that was a yappy. That's one. A little nicer yappy. Crappies in the cove. That one's a little better. There's one. Let's let it sink a little more. There we go. That's a nice crappie. him in the fryer. Just kidding, I don't like eating crappies. Oh, Dirk Diggler. A little Dirk Diggler. Look at all these minnows. Look at all that shit. There's one. No shortage of them here in this lake. There's a crappie. Look at the fight on that crappie. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nice little fish for a springtime. Water temps 52 and a half cooperation from the crappies, but no bass, surprisingly. Not even a dink. That was a good bite. Big thump. 
Yeah, that's a nicer one. Biggest crappie yet. That's a nice one. With a mouth on him. Took it deep. And that one's getting bigger for sure. He's a year or two older than the rest. We'll give him a measure. There you go. 13 incher. Big fat. That, look at the girth on him. Nice crappie. Just definitely hoping to catch a big one. All right, guys. Concluding this video, I made it to my parents' house. I don't really know what my next move is, other than we got to charge our fish finder back. This guy right here, and we're gonna use the anchor box. All right. All right, so I just learned in order to use these, you gotta press that button. All right, but now we're rolling. I'm gonna give the old battery a charge here. And we're charging. All right, well, that's all we got. Stay tuned, there's gonna be some videos to come here from the not so southern regions of uh, Pennsylvania, Jersey, Delmarva. All right, see how it goes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.